Bill Lowry. Hey, over here. Ladies and gentlemen, yes. Yes, point it right at me, darling. Okay, our Transylvanians are on camera again tonight and announcing and... Yes, uh, we don't know what happened to the sound effect. Hey, happy Thanksgiving. This is Thanksgiving Eve. Everybody's sitting at home and uh, most everybody got the day off early. I guess they got off. A lot of people got off early today and uh, some people are not working tomorrow. I guess most people are not working tomorrow, except several turkeys, I guess, are going to be sacrificing their all. But we're glad to have you tuned in tonight. We've got a great show for you. We've got a guest band with us. As you can see, I'm in the midst of band equipment. We have At The Drive-In with us. They kind of describe themselves as grunge polka, a grunge polka group. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So I'm sure this will just uh, whet your appetite for what's coming tomorrow, yes. Uh, a lot of things are happening in the news. Uh, one of the big stories, I guess, was the beauty queen uh, out east who, I guess, uh, after she surrendered her crown, loaded her car up with guns and hammers and chainsaws and lighter fluid and set off to see her ex-boyfriend who had been involved now with another woman who was pregnant by him and... I guess uh, she got to his house and said the car stalled and went up and knocked on the door to ask if she could come in and make a phone call. And when her ex-boyfriend opened the door and turned around to lead her into the house, she hit him in the head with the hammer. And uh, fortunately, I guess the, his mother and his other girlfriend, they were able to wrestle her down and take the hammer away from her. And then they found the 9 millimeter, the shotgun, the Uzi, uh, the lighter fluid, the chainsaw, the hatchet. I guess she was rather armed, but she was able, and she's a beauty queen. She was a beauty queen. And I guess with her considerable good looks and never having been, uh, fin never having, uh, been uh, a criminal before, they uh, gave her a light sentence. They reduced her charges now to misdemeanor, so she's at the most can only get about six and a half years about six and a half years. Would you all close that door there, please? Thank you very much. And uh, as uh, the old saying goes, hell has no fury like a woman scorned. Poor guy turns around, she clubs him in the head with a hammer. Fortunately, she hadn't been lifting weights or something and wasn't able to hit him too hard. But she said, uh, and in court, she said, I never lose my temper. I just have it all the time. I, I guess that was, yes, uh, Kind of like uh, many that I know. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad though she didn't. Uh, I'm glad that. What does that say? <laughs> oh yeah. I'm glad that she didn't marry this poor guy. I mean, thank God he was spared. Uh, you know, too many. I believe too many women get married before they can really support a husband. You know the way he should be supported. And yes, yeah, so too bad that old laugh track is out. And, what are you doing? Don't tear the wires off of there. And we'll bite it and put it right back on there. So we had a good technician. Uh, women, see, I, I'm, I'm surrounded by women here in this studio that really know what they're doing. Now, get over here and help. Yeah, I have another technician here. So, But uh, a lot of women are into the women's lib thing. They want equal salaries with men. I think they're setting their sights a little low, actually. But uh, they want equal salaries. And... Just the other day, there was a demonstration right here in El Paso. A bunch of women livers were marching down the street shouting, Free women! Free women! Free women! And, and some drunk that was laying over there on the street said, oh, Okay, said, but do you deliver? And, uh, yeah, do you deliver? <laughs> uh, I, uh, thank you very much, yeah. Uh, free women. I don't think he understood what they were really saying. Of course, a lot of women don't want to be liberated uh, yet, just not yet. You know, first of all, they want to be captured. Uh, yeah, a lot of them. I have a couple of those in the studio right now. Tonight. Uh, another, yes, thank you. They're, they're, Rama they're Romanians, and they're looking for a green card. <laughs> a green card. Yeah, yes. 
Uh, just call the station and I will give you their names and address. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, anyway, uh, Mr. Uh, Clinton is back in the news, and he came firmly out and stated his position, at least for today. He does uh, vacillate quite a little, uh, wishy-washy, up and down. Um, he said that he is against the prayer in school amendment. He is against it. But he was quick to add, he said he does believe it's okay for the students to smoke marijuana as long as they don't inhale. A little slow there, yes, on the... Thank you very... Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please stop the sick laughing. And where's the second sheet? That's what I want to know. Yes, it is right there. Please, yes. It's not long, but it is very good. <laughs> this is Thanksgiving Thanksgiving Eve, and I, I cannot let... I cannot end this monologue without a Thanksgiving joke. I mean, what would Thanksgiving be? Uh, last year, this is a sad story, but a little boy said, Mommy, Mommy, said, said, I don't want any of that stuffing. I, I refuse to eat it. And he further stated, and he said, I don't see why the turkeys eat it either. <laughs> I guess he, he figured, yes, he, he figured all that stuffing inside the turkey, that the turkey had actually eaten that stuff. Well, anyway, we hope you have a lot of uh, turkeys and giblets and uh, stuffing and uh, sweet potato pie and cranberries and all sorts of stuff. Yes, the, what's going on here? Uh, we're going to be right back in just a minute, and if we can get them in here and get them all grunged up, the drive-in movie guys are here with us tonight. They're going to do a little uh, grunge polka. A little grunge polka Thanksgiving music for you, so stay tuned. We'll open up the lines. Don't go away. Bye-bye. We'll be right back. are back here live in the studios of Channel 65. We're glad to have you tuned in, and uh, we are honored tonight to have in the studio none other than the drive-in movie, only it's not really a movie. This is a, uh, a local band. How long have you guys been trying to... 76 years. How long? 76. You started in 76. Yes. We don't remember much. We can go out and ask. They don't remember too much. Uh, <laughs> we don't know what to attribute that to, but anyway, they're a local band, and... They're going to play for us tonight. Uh, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Here they are, the drive-in from El Paso.
Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. We are we are back over here, I think. Yes. Um, all I can say to that. Yes. NATO bombs again. <laughs> uh, headlines in the USA Today. Uh, this is the was the drive-in. And uh, who, who's the leader of the group? No, uh, which one is, uh, which was the designated leader? Do we have a designated? Uh, Jared, uh, the guitar player? Is that his name, Jared? Jared. Jared. Jared, uh, uh, bop on over here and sit down on the, uh, set. Jared, please, over here on the sofa. Thank you very much. And uh, plug that little thing right on there. Uh, put it in there with some of your other piercings. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, okay. Uh, uh, put it down uh, in a normal place there, okay. We, we don't want you to pull the ring out of your nose. Okay, Jared what? Rin. Jared? Rin. Uh, rind. Mm -hmm. Rin. Rin. R E N? Like Stimpy. Like a Rin? W R E N N. Duh, w R E N. Now, do your parents know you're out tonight? I think so. Are they watching this uh, display of musical ability? I really couldn't tell you. I don't know. You don't know? Did you tell them you were going to be on TV tonight? Definitely. Do they uh, normally stay up this late? I don't know. I'm usually not home. You're usually not home now. How old a young man are you? I'm 12. No, come on. Okay, I'm 17. I know you act about that, but uh, you're 17. Uh huh. Yes, one for, one for the old boy here. Uh, so you're 17. You're still in high school. Is most of the group still in high school? Oh. Uh, they dropped out or? Two fifths. Pardon? No. Two fifths are in high school. Two fifths are in high school. What high school y'all go to? Hanks. Richie Valens Junior High. Hanks. Go to Hanks. One goes to Richie Valens. I'm sure. Uh huh. Uh, now, uh, would you really, now some of you, I can, I can detect there is some musical ability here. What? Not much, but, uh, oh. you know, you're young, you're young, you need to keep practicing. Now, have you ever thought of doing anything a little more, a little more traditional? Why? As in, what traditional? Well, I don't know, I mean, uh, as I understand it now, I mean, I'm not the hippest guy on the planet, but it seems to me that grunge is something that kind of like faded out about uh, about uh, three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So aren't you guys a little behind time here? Yeah. I mean, don't you want to stay on the cutting edge of what's happening now? Yeah. Oh, punk rock was that's the punk rock was ten years ago. No. Yeah, yeah, they were doing punk no. rock. Yeah, yeah. Headfield. Punk rock was big. Uh, I was in California about ten years ago, out in Newport Beach, and that's when punk rock was its no, biggest. No. Punk rock. Yeah. Punk rock. Yeah. Punk rock. <laughs> oh yeah, there's new. This is new punk. This is the new unimproved. We sound like Green Day. Huh? <laughs> well, it's hard now. Seriously, you know, it's hard to tell what you sound like because. I think uh, I know I've had uh, I had another punk group on here. What was the name of that other punk group Foss. we had? Foss. Foss. Green Day. Yeah, Foss. We had Foss on here, and I, you know, comparing your uh, musical agility, and now I mean with grunge, do you really have to leap around? Is that part of the criteria for? It's fun. It's, it's fun. Definitely, yeah. So you feel like, I mean, it's kind of like combining playing music with uh, Jane Fonda workout. Yeah, basically. Basically, kind of. So it kind of keeps you in, kind of keeps you in, in shape that way. Okay, now how many punk, uh, how many grunge punk rock groups are there in El Paso at the present time that you know of? A lot. Probably 15. 15? And uh, where are you usually playing at? Do you play someplace or just kind of in your dad's basement? The attic. attic Alejandro's. In the attic. Golden Age. Oh, in the attic or at the attic? At the attic. At the attic. At the attic. We make money doing this. You you actually make money yes. doing this. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> make, make money. I, I can't believe. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Well, it just goes to show you, you know, there's a dog for every flea, uh, or something like that, or a flea oh. for every dog, or what you the? know. Uh, what are we? Well, I, I'm not sure, but. Is there yeah. an extra microphone? Uh, why? Because I want to talk. Well, you, you, you missed your chance. Next tag break. Tag Next. Tag no, no, no. Stay right here. Stay. No, stay right here, please. And um, 
We just take one at a time here, basically, on this show. Put, put it back over there. All right. What did you say? I said that we're grunge rock. Okay. Grunge rock. Uh, okay, so there's five of you in the band. Uh, what's, what's everybody's name? Introduce everybody. Jarrett. No, Jarrett is introducing everybody. Jarrett. Jarrett. Crawley. Jim. Bernie. Kenny. Melissa, Carlos. No, I'm talking Rick. about in the band. Oh, Jared, just the five guys Crawley, in the band. They Jim, have last Bernie names. And Kenny. Now, do they have last names? I don't need the last name. You're, are you ashamed of your last name here? No, my parents are ashamed of me. Your parents are ashamed. Now, wouldn't you be ashamed of me? No, I wouldn't be ashamed of you. I mean, no, I just don't hey, want to bring my family any shame. You don't want to bring your family any shame. Because the only key that we know we're in is when we're in Florida. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, now, do your folks? Do, do most of your folks approve of, of you being in this kind of a band? My yeah, they do. They do? I mean, they like it. Do they feel like They have musical tolerance. They have music tolerance. Yeah. And that's what we have here on this program, obviously. Because we, we have everybody on here. We've had all sorts. Now, a lot of the kids down at your school, do you feel like... Uh, uh, have you heard the phrase, Generation X? Uh, yes. It was a good... They were a good, they were a good band until Billy Idol went solo. <laughs> uh-huh. I didn't know that they uh, that well, Billy yes. Idol had a band named that Generation was his first X. Band, was Generation that? X. So that shows where I was at. Uh, Ten years ago. I guess the media has basically labeled a bunch of kids, you know, as Generation X because uh, the kids themselves have expressed a feeling of confusion that they're not hippies, they're not yuppies, they're not. It's confusion, right? You know, they don't know who they are, where they're at. They have no, they have no identity. You feel like that? You feel like th that you're in a kind of a twilight zone here? You've grown up between the 80s and the 90s? and yeah. uh, Labels are labels. So, okay, so th that's kind of the attitude. They say Generation X, like, who cares? I mean, is it kind of like, I don't care, we don't care, uh, who cares, nobody cares? Well, we're all our own personal little Rod Serlings, but, I mean, still, Proposition 187. <laughs> could turn into a typical 187 in the neighborhood, you know? Okay, you're, you're not being picked up because we don't have you wired for sound. Okay. We only have Jared right now wired for sound. So, so seriously, do you feel like a lot of kids in uh, high school and around uh, feel like uh, maybe they come from uh, families that... Uh, how many come from uh, torn up families? How many come from broken families? Just a little survey here. Divorced families? Families not broken. We repaired, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get repaired. Uh, so do you, you think that that causes a lot of I really bitterness or anger? And, you know, in, in grunge rock, I've got to be real honest. If you'll get real for a minute, I don't know if you will. Let's it's get real. Because it's hard, it's hard a lot of times, especially kids, young people, when they're in a group to get them to be serious. You know, you just cut them out and get them alone, they'll talk to you pretty serious. But when they're in a bunch, it's hard to get them to, you know, to be serious. But uh, a, a lot of kids nowadays are very lonely. They're very uh, disorientated, and do you feel that's a problem? I mean, hey, a lot of kids are committing suicide. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't affect me. Huh? It doesn't affect me. I don't know. I don't pay attention really. So do you care about anybody else other than yourself? Oh, yeah. Like who? The guys in the band? Outside the band? I mean... A few, yeah. So what's education mean to you? Education? Yeah. Tell them what you got on your SAT, man. <laughs> Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Tell them what you got. 13, 10. Woo! <laughs> 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 Not too bad. So, okay, so what do you what do you plan to be? Are you going to go on to college? Uh, mm-hmm, definitely. What are you going to major in? Chemistry. Chemistry? You want to be a chemist? No. <laughs> go to med school afterwards. You want to go to med school? You want to be a doctor? Maybe. What certain. field? I don't know. I really haven't thought about it. You haven't thought about it. No. You obviously have thought a little bit about it. Oh well, yeah, but not that specifically. It's gonna be a rock star. <laughs> so it's pretty hard to break into the rock star scene. I think it's pretty much of a political thing. Uh, yeah, except unless you're from El Paso, then it's just a piece of cake, man. You just just ride in there, one of the one of the one of the main towns where they pick up most of the rock stars, and yes, you can't can't even uh, can't even get country western. Please, uh, young man, pick that up and control yourself over there. Thank you very much. Just, just, uh, okay. 
We got a... Okay, we're going to open the lines up. 8330650. This is uh, Thanksgiving Eve. Hello. Thanksgiving Eve. Uh, what do you think about Thanksgiving? What's your views on Thanksgiving? Um, I don't know. Cedric? There's another little I'm, mic laying I'm over there. I'm thankful for giving. There's another little mic laying over there. You, you, you probably can figure out, yeah, how to use that. Yeah. Okay. It has a pin in it, so you can pierce it in there to some part of your anatomy. Like <laughs> Any place except on the mouth, okay? Because it would be too close. So what does Thanksgiving mean to you? Thanksgiving means playing on Let's Get Real and showing the world that we rock <laughs> for... What's really going on? What's really going on? You know, I watch a show, and it's called Let's Get Real, but I don't ever see, like... An opposite like viewpoint. It's always like one side every time. We'll see, but that's that way? that's the advantage you have when you pay for the airtime. Da 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 da. Yeah. Yeah. You, can, <laughs> you can put on what you want to put on. We got to take a break. Are we going to break? Oh, we're not going to break yet. Okay, I thought he was giving me hand signals over there. Um, uh, young man, please no sit down over there and stay no away from the camera. Yes. Down. No effects is coming into town, so all you punk rockers come down and see No Effects. No, uh, who's No Effects? No Effects is like really. Hello, uh, you're talking to me. Uh, who's who's No Effects? It's a really big band from somewhere in California, and they started their own record label like we have, Rock. and they and they've rocked ever since, and they like brought their own label, you know, to like a lot of money. Okay, now what about the one guy that rocked there and right out and shot himself in the head with a shotgun? Yeah, I don't know his parents' fault. He huh? went out like a king. Oh, he went out like a fool. He died like a fool dies. Oh, well, not really. Come on, I mean, hey, let's fa let's get real here. He was unhappy. He had everything. He was the king of the grunge rockers there, wasn't he? But he didn't want to be, though. Come so on, what do you mean he didn't want to yeah, be? but if you're put on a pedestal on a flower that's going to crumble, why even be put on there, you know? Well, so oh. then so then the main thing here is, uh, would you say then is uh, what he was shooting for was to be offensive to all people and to be disliked by all people? Yeah. But instead, but instead in his, uh, his quest to be disliked by everybody, everybody's started liking the dude and yeah. he couldn't handle that yeah well, he I couldn't handle being people being nice to him yeah people being nice well to him. i'm just it saying he couldn't him. he was the kind of kid that grew up and was picked on at school you know he was the geek the outsider yeah and all of a sudden his music made him big and all of a sudden dorks that would you know pick on him in high school are singing the words of his songs how would you feel you know so of course he's gonna like hate the world because after all, already hated him in the beginning. Well, why would he hate the world? I mean, if he uh, achieves some a semblance of success and recognition, why would that be such a turnoff to him that he'd have to blow his brains out? He had a wife and a kid. Wasn't that a little bit selfish to desert yeah, them and leave but, them I mean, hanging? I personally like to go shop at Kmart without somebody coming up to me asking me for my autograph. Well, let's see, but then why get in the band? Why play? I mean, it, obviously... No, no, no. Come on, let's get real. Obviously, you guys are extroverts. You like to be seen. You, you wanted to be on a show. And, you, and the way you dance and jump, and that's not... Uh, you know, I've worked with a lot of bands. Believe me, I've worked with a lot of bands, and you know, there are musicians that are, I mean, extremely skilled and talented and will just, like a Chet Atkins, I don't know if you know Chet Atkins, he can play anything. I'll guarantee he can play grunge, he can play uh, all, he does, he's covered all the Beatles music, Lennon's music, everything else, but he'll just sit down and just like tear the neck off of a guitar playing, you know. Well, we basically started playing music and we all suffered from narcolepsy. Epilepsy, okay. Narcolepsy. <laughs> we'll, we'll be right back. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's get real with great gobs of Thanksgiving uh, dressing, dumplings, and uh, Thanksgiving music from the drive-in. Yes, at the drive-in. Uh, excuse me, I stand corrected. Uh, here they are at the drive-in with a little turkey gobbler music.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, even the horses are liking that one. And we got uh, Jim, uh, no last name over here, to protect the uh, innocent or the guilty. Uh, a lot of energy going out there, Jim, a lot of energy. Thanks. And uh, we appreciate you guys coming down. Uh, we've got uh, phone calls here still lit up. We'll take a couple more phone calls. But uh, <laughs> takes you a while to get calmed down. Now, you guys, are, yeah, now, you guys, uh, what's your attitude towards drugs? Uh, it varies. We don't really talk about it. You don't talk about it. You no, don't. Well, I mean, there, there's no point to be making for us. We don't. We don't stand on any platform. You don't. I don't like pro-drug bans because I think that they, it's a lack of intelligence to just think about one thing. Yeah. But at the same time, most musicians do drugs. I don't have a problem with it as long as it doesn't hurt other people, really. No, it does hurt other people, though, doesn't it? In the long run, I mean, if you well, really that's, that's think it's that's an opinion that I don't really um, talk about. So you're trying to remain neutral on yeah, drugs. Well, I mean, I could say my opinion and make him mad, or him mad. I could say my opinion and make you mad, or I could just keep. Well, it everybody's going. got to stand for something, or you fall for anything, as uh, some wise man I'll fall said. For any, anything. You'll fall for anything. Now, isn't that kind of a desperate? Yeah. <laughs> ah, yes. Uh, what's uh, what's your what's most of the guys' view on religion now? What what do you think about religion? Uh, it, it just varies from person. Organized religion. I mean, I've been I've been going to church a long time. No, you have. Yeah, I'm I'm religious in a way, and in a way, I'm I believe in the human race as a religion. You know, you know what I mean? I mean, I. Where do, you, where do you guys pick up most here for philosophy? What would you say? Uh, hello, guys. Can we sit down here and pay attention? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'm a traveling uh, a preacher, but it's hard to talk to a traveling crowd. Yes. Uh, so where do you think most of, where do you pick up most of your input, uh, where you form your ideas, your philosophies, your attitudes? Where does that come from? Where are, you, where are you picking it up at? Life. Well, come on, life. That's too general. Well, no, come I don't, on, I don't school. Preach, I don't preach anyone I'm not else's talking views. about preaching. I'm talking about you've got opinions. You're a very right, opinionated right. bunch. I opinionate what my opinions come okay, from. Okay, where where, so where are you forming your opinions from? Well, my opinion on drugs is from experiencing them and seeing my friends experience them and then seeing how life relates after, before, during. Yeah. My experience on religion is being there, doing it, seeing it, going to religious conferences, camps, talking to different ministers in the world. <clears throat> I've based my own opinions on the experiences that I've seen and had. Okay, so you're not getting, you're not sitting around reading a lot of books or. I read. I don't read a lot, but I read. I don't like taking other people's opinions and just spitting them off as rhetoric. Yeah. I don't like listening to someone tell me this is wrong, so I don't do it. Yeah, well, you. I would rather see, go out there. Very, and see, you're, you're very close to true religion because that's true religion is an experience. It's not something your mom taught you, your dad taught you, or some preacher or priest taught you. It's something you've got to experience for yourself. Yeah. And, you know, it is a proven fact that life experience tells us sooner or later everybody dies. So far. Uh, yes, got a little rise there from... Uh, did I get an amen over there? Amen! Yes. Right. And, and, and another another proven fact is after you die, you're dead for a long time, I think. is uh, What was that guy's name? Court... Uh, Kurt... Court... Kurt Cobain. I don't like talking about Kurt Cobain. Cobain. <laughs> Experience, ladies and gentlemen, the younger generation here in El Paso, some of them at least, uh, at the drive-in is the name of the group, and uh, we're glad to have had them on the show tonight. We hope to get them out to the ranch. We need this boy's ranch <laughs> and a girl's home and a little vocational training. So call me at my office, 581-8179, if you can help us out over there. We do need some help. And uh, Lord willing, we'll see you back. Uh, hello, I'm over here. Hello. Now, we'll see you back here Friday night. Uh, tomorrow night's Thanksgiving. Going to take a night off, do a little rerun tomorrow night. But we'll see you back here Friday night. The Lord willing, Creek don't rise. Hey, have a safe Thanksgiving. Be careful if you're traveling and uh, don't drink and drive. Uh, it's probably best not to ever drink to the point where you lose your facilities up there. And uh, happy Turkey Day tomorrow. We'll see you, as I said, Friday night. Okay, they're going to take us out. Take it away, guys. Music over there.